Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to build off the concepts in our previous discussion. In that discussion, we talked about the average velocity of this helicopter that was falling from the sky and the slope of tangent lines. We're going to take that idea and we're going to go into instantaneous velocity at any second for this vehicle and the slope of tangent lines. To remind you of the context here for this graphical representation, what we're looking at is this function f of x equals negative 16x squared plus 256. This function models the height of this helicopter x seconds after it starts falling from the sky. It starts at a height of 256. This term is the effect of gravity, which brings this object to the ground. Our output in this case is feet. The input is the seconds after it starts to drop. So again, our graphical representation is modeling the descent of this helicopter as it falls to the ground. At zero seconds, obviously, it starts here. Here's my beautiful little helicopter. It starts at 256 feet. After four seconds, it has hit the ground. We use this information here in a table of values that's graphically represented there. At zero seconds, we're at 256 feet. After two seconds, we had gone down to 192. At 3.9 seconds, we were down to 12.64 feet. And after four seconds, we have hit the ground. We then use this information to find average speeds. Between the interval of zero and four seconds, since this object fell off total of 256 feet, we found that this had a velocity of negative 64 feet per second. We then determined between two seconds and four seconds, this object had a velocity of negative 92 feet per second. And between 3.9 and 4 seconds, we determined that the velocity of this helicopter had reached negative 126.4 feet per second. Again, the important thing about this work is that the closer our interval is to a specific time, in this case, we care about the speed of the helicopter when it hits the ground, knowing that it can't withstand a speed more than 100 feet per second. The closer we get to four seconds, the more accurately we understand the actual speed that's happening at four seconds. Though, we still haven't exactly calculated what the exact speed of the helicopter is when it hits the ground. We have a pretty dang good estimate here of negative 126.4, but we haven't found that exact speed. In this video, we're going to show you a numerical technique for finding the instantaneous speed of this helicopter at any time. Before we get to the instantaneous slope, I want to make sure this connection between the average velocity and the secant line is very clear. As you can see right here, we're analyzing the difference between the two seconds and the four seconds right here. And I've highlighted these differences in the heights, the, the rise here of 192 feet, and the, the run or the change in the time of two seconds. This is where we get the rate of change or the velocity between the, on the interval of two to four seconds. But this is also the exactly the same thing as your rise over run conversation when looking at the slope of lines. Specifically, the rate of change in this situation seen as velocity, we calculated the change in the feet between the two seconds and four seconds over the change in the number of seconds, that gave us a velocity in feet per second. But graphically, you can see this is exactly the same thing as the rise over the run of this secant line. Again, this is a called the secant line um, of the points between x equals 2 and x equals 4 for this function because this line goes through those specific two points on the graph of the function. What I'm going to do now is I want to investigate the exact velocity of this helicopter at two seconds. Specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do very similar to what we did previously. I'm going to look at two seconds and I'm going to look at the intervals just before and just after two seconds analyze those average velocities to see if I can determine an estimate for the instantaneous speed at two seconds. This, as you graphically will see, will be the exactly the same thing 
as the slope of the tangent line, the line that hits just at x equals 2 on this function f of x. So, to find out what's happening just at 2 seconds, let's zoom in on the graph here. Now we have this tight interval around 2, where we have different values before and after 2. This is really important, and this will be a major concept in limits moving forward. I am not going to only analyze the velocity as we build up to 2. I want to see the velocity just after 2 also. And that's important, because then between those, I can average those velocities to get a pretty dang good estimate for the actual velocity right at 2 seconds. So the information I have in my table here relates directly to the graphical representation I have right there. What I'm going to do now is to find the average velocity specifically here between 1.99 seconds and 2 seconds. So I'm going to find that average velocity. I'm also going to find the average velocity between 2 seconds and 2.01 seconds. My assumption is, due to how something falls with the effect of gravity, that at 1.99 to 2 seconds, this object will be, the helicopter, will be going a little bit slower than it actually is at 2 seconds. And in the interval between 2 seconds and 2.01 seconds, it'll be going a little bit too fast. But between those two, I'll be able to sandwich the actual speed, the instantaneous velocity, at 2 seconds. To compute these average velocities, I'm going to do exactly the same thing that we had done previously. I'm going to take the difference in their height, so the difference in the feet, this rise, and I'm going to divide it by the difference in the time, or the run. In this case right here, I have 192 feet minus 192.638 over 2 seconds minus 1.99 seconds. This gives me a difference in height of negative 0.638, a difference in the time interval here of 0.01. When I do this division right here, what I will get is negative 63.8 feet per second. Again, that is the average velocity on the interval between 0.99 seconds and 2 seconds. I'm getting very close to an estimate for what's happening at 2 seconds. Doing the exact same thing with this second interval, um, between 2.01 and 2, I have a height of 191.358 minus 192 over 2.01 minus 2 for the seconds. Here, I get a difference in height of negative 0.642 over this interval that again is 0 0.1 uh, seconds long. Um, and this division will give us that the, uh, the average speed in this interval, or average velocity, is negative 64.2 feet per second. So there we have it. We've now found the exact average velocities for the interval that's a hundredth of a second before two seconds and a hundredth of a second after two seconds. With those two, we can now estimate that the instantaneous velocity at two seconds, what, how fast that helicopter is falling at exactly two seconds after it started to fall, will be the average of these two. Quick calculation, adding these and dividing by two, will give us that the instantaneous speed at 2 seconds would be negative 64 feet per second. I decided not to cover it in this video, but you'll see examples in the textbook where we'll look at more intervals than just these two. A few intervals before and a few intervals after are the point that we're looking at here at 2 seconds. The most important thing I want to emphasize, though, is that we absolutely have to check both sides of two seconds. We didn't know, for instance, like maybe this wasn't exactly negative 64 feet per second. Maybe the speed at two seconds was more like negative 63.9. We wouldn't have known that just coming from the one side here. But if we come from both sides of two seconds, from before and after two seconds, we can get a really, really good estimate of this speed. 
The honest truth is very soon after we learn this method, we're going to have very strong algebraic techniques for finding the instantaneous velocity without having to find these kind of intervals. Though this idea of finding the rate of change before and after this point of two seconds will stay the same. Last thing I want to do now is talk about how the instantaneous velocity relates back to slope. If we zoom out from our graphical representation and think about what was happening between two seconds and four seconds, we know that the average velocity between two seconds and four seconds, this negative 96 feet per second, would actually exactly the same thing as the slope of the line connecting those two points. In the same way, as if we were taking those two points and putting them infinitely close together, the instantaneous slope at x equals 2 of negative 64 feet per second is the same thing as the slope of the tangent line. Again, look at the, the picture of this tangent line. The tangent line is this line that just meets the graph at x equals 2, but does not go through two points at that point, just goes through x equals 2 and bounces off. The slope of that line is this negative 64, the same thing as the instantaneous velocity. In fact, if we wanted the equation of the tangent line in using the point slope formula, we would get the line tangent to this function at x equals 2 to be this. It will be y minus the y value or output value of 192 equals the slope. Our slope is this value right here of negative 64 and then x minus 2 because we're at an x, x value of 2. Here are my last thoughts on this. First of all, it's really important to understand that the idea of average velocity and the slope of a secant line are exactly the same. They're not different in any way. They're both rates of change. One's a rate of a change in a context, this helicopter falling to the ground. The other is a rate of change describing the rise over the run of the graphical representation. Following from that then is the idea of instantaneous velocity that we can estimate on these really small intervals around some x value or input value that we're given is exactly the same as the slope of the tangent line. If we know the slope of the tangent line and we know the input and output or the x and y values at that function location, we can easily find the equation of the tangent line using point slope or generally using the slope intercept formula.